<coughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to uh, Operations Research. Today we will talk about a new topic, integer programming. Okay, let me give you one uh, motivating example. This is about the company or the restru chain restaurant Taco Bell in the United States. Um, if you still have some memory about the example about United Airlines we mentioned to you, United Airlines developed a linear program to schedule their uh, workforce at their service stations. Okay, So a linear program is used to determine <coughs> how many steps do we need in each time, in each time point, in each service location. The same problem is faced by Taco Bell. Taco Bell has more than 6,500 restaurants in the United States. And it must know at any restaurant, at any time point, or in each shift, how many staffs he should hire for um, running the restaurant. Okay, how many um, clerks, how many cooks, and so on and so on. Instead of using an LP, Taco Bell here use an integer program. Okay, an LP with integer variables to solve its problem. This is still a scheduling problem, a personnel scheduling problem. However, now, the difference is that the number of staffs is typically small. For each restaurant uh, in, of, of Taco Bell, it typically only needs one or two clerks and uh, one or two um, cooks. Okay? Unlike uh, United Airlines, which may need about um, hundreds or thousands of workers at each site. Taco Bell only need uh, two, two, three, or four. So if we use linear programming for United Airlines, it's fine to get some fractional numbers because rounding up or down does not matter. But for Taco Bell, rounding can be very inaccurate. And later we will tell you why simply rounding up or down does not give you an optimal solution for integer programs. So for Taco Bell, he really needs an integer program to do that. Once this has been done, uh, $13 million can be saved per year. Okay? If you are interested, read those stories and articles provided to you. Oh, by the way, uh, it should be... 12.5. Okay, so today the topic is integer programming. We have worked with linear programs for more than, uh, actually more than four weeks. And in some cases, we feel that variables should only take integer values. Okay, some um, different scenarios are here. We were working with producing tables and chairs in a big factory. In that case, it's fine to use fractional variables. However, if we are selecting some books to sell, just like the knapsack problem, then those items should be modeled with integer variables. Okay? The reason is basically the same as the story about United Airlines versus Taco Bell. It turns out that when you are talking about knapsack problems, okay, each variable should either be 0 or 1. If you get 0 0.6 as an outcome because you use linear program, how do you know whether you should run up or run down? You don't know. And actually that can give you a, very f a solution that is very far from an optimal solution. But if you are in a very big factory and you are producing some items, then using linear programs is the right way because for those fractional variables, rounding up and down will only give you very uh, a solution that is very close to an optimal solution. Okay, so you know there are some situations to use LP, some situations to use IP. The subject of formulating and solving models with integer variables is called integer programming. Uh, typically, we are talking about linear integer programming. So if we don't specifically say anything, then 
IP means linear IP. If the objective function or any functional constraint is nonlinear, then we have a nonlinear IP. Okay, uh, nonlinear IP uh, basically is just very hard. So in this course, we will only focus on linear IP. We will tell you how to solve linear IP with a particular algorithm, and we will tell you how IP can be used to formulate many, many different kinds of problems. Okay? With LP, you can do a lot of things. With IP, you can do much even more. We will tell you that. So, we will first introduce one general algorithm. The idea will be to decompose an integer program to multiple linear programs and solve all those linear programs and compare those outcomes. Okay, sounds very simple. What's interesting is that uh, when we want to decompose that integer program, we will use a smart way to cut down the number of LPs that we need to solve. We will tell you how. And in general, uh, one fact is solving a large-scale IP can take a very long time. Okay, That's something um, happening in practice. So theoretically, we can show you that integer programs um, is NP hard. Okay, Even if you don't care about that, a general problem formulated as an integer program can just take a very long time to solve. Okay, so that's why when accuracy is not the most important thing, we sacrifice accuracy for the solution time. Okay, that's some typical strategy. We will then tell you how binary variables can be used to enrich our formulation. Okay, that's the topic for the last video of this lecture. Um, the chapter has been moved to chapter 12, so let me make the correction here. But anyway, there are some relevant uh, sections in the textbook. Okay, let me start to give you our preparation with linear relaxation. Suppose we are given an IP like this. How may we solve it? That's the first question we want to ask. One, uh, one thing first is to, let's see here. This program is that uh, I have two variables. They must be satisfying this constraint. Okay, somewhere here. And I have a simple linear objective function. And the variables now must be integers. Okay, Z means the set of integers. Z plus means the set of non-negative integers. So you can see that our feasible points are these integer points. Okay, well, that's our feasible points, or they, con they, co they construct our feasible region. Okay, so first, the first observation is that the simplex method simply does not work because now the feasible region in some sense is not a region. The feasible region is discrete. discrete. So we can no longer apply the idea of something like uh, moving along edges and uh, keep searching until blah blah blah, looking for neighbors blah blah, and that just does not work. Because we, at any point, we have no direction to move that is feasible. Okay, here, 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 here. Oh. Everything is infeasible. This is not a region. But all we know is about how to solve LP, right? In this course, we haven't told you anything else. So, at least you may want to try this. How about we solve a linear relaxation first? Okay? A linear relaxation is the following. Given an integer program, its linear relaxation is the resulting LP after removing all those integer constraints, okay? Given an IP, let's simply assume that all the variables are fractional. Then we get a linear relaxation. That's our starting point. So, for example here, for this particular IP, its linear relaxation is just to remove these constraints, okay? So, xi would be 
just non-negative. Previously, it's non-negative integers. Now it's non-negative real numbers. So that's linear relaxation. Or for a knapsack problem, when you have some binary variables, then your linear relaxation is that they can be real numbers within the range of 0 and 1. Okay, 0 and 1. Or you can simply write it as two constraints, it doesn't matter. Linear relaxation obviously is different from the original integer program. But one very useful fact is that linear relaxation provides a bound. For example, for a minimization integer program, its linear relaxation will always give us a lower bound, like this. Suppose I give you a minimization integer program, and I say z star is its objective value associated with the optimal solution. Okay, well, for this guy, I have an optimal solution, I call it z star. And its linear relaxation is an LP. The objective value would be z prime. Then I always have this inequality z prime would be smaller than z star, I mean smaller than or equal to, okay? Proof or the explanation is very simple. Their objective function is the same, right? But the linear relaxation's feasible region um, basically is larger than that of the IP, okay? The feasible region becomes larger. Then obviously you can do better. And then for minimization problem, better means a smaller objective value. For maximization problem, your linear relaxation would give you an upper bound. Okay? But in general, it gives you a bound because you are relaxing some constraint. Your feasible region becomes larger and then you can do better. So you get a bound. Just less simple. Now, if we are very lucky, then the linear relaxation may be infeasible or unbounded. Okay? Then we know that our IP must also be infeasible or unbounded. Um, you just need some simple arguments to show it, but it's not a big deal. And then, uh, if our linear relaxation is feasible, then if we are lucky enough, an optimal solution to the linear program may also happen to be feasible to the original IP, okay? Oh, please note that this may not be true in general, okay? We will give you some examples, but obviously, when you solve that LP, it's, it's possible that some variables in the optimal solution is fractional. If any variable is fractional, but it should be integer, then your optimal solution, your LP optimal solution, is infeasible to your IP. Okay? So in general, that can happen. If you are so lucky that your LP optimal solution is IP feasible, then your IP is actually solved. Okay? Formally, that X, star, X prime be the optimal solution to the linear relaxation. And then if X prime happens to be feasible to that IP, then it is optimal. Okay. Uh, the idea again is very simple. Suppose x prime is not optimal, then that means there is another feasible solution x prime prime that is better. Okay. However, as x prime prime is feasible to the IP, it must also be feasible to the linear relaxation, right? And then x prime prime feasible to the linear relaxation then x prime prime must be better than x prime and x prime cannot be optimal to the linear relaxation oh, the idea is just so simple so once you solve that LP relaxation and then you are happy to get an IP feasible solution then the problem is solved but what if we are unlucky oh, then we need some other ways suppose we solve a linear relaxation with an LR, which means linear relaxation optimal solution x prime. 
Okay, suppose we get that x prime, and the x prime unfortunately has at least one variable violating the integer constraint. Okay, then a very natural thing to do is to round that variable, but uh, questions are here. I want to round this variable, but how do I know whether I should round it up or round it down? And then I probably need to verify whether the resulting solution is feasible or not. I don't know. Okay, I need to round up and test, round down and test. Too tedious. And will the resulting solution be close enough to an IP optimal solution? Oh, I don't know whether it will be optimal. I also don't know if it is not optimal, then how far it is, right? Or if I have so many variables that are fractional, then if I need to um, run down some, some, uh, some of them and run up some of them, how do I know? What should I do? There are so many problems. I just want to show you one example to illustrate that this problem is so serious. So consider this LP, uh, sorry, IP. Okay, uh, I have two constraints with integer constraints. Uh, if we depict the linear relaxation, then the feasible region is here. Okay, if we are talking about the IP, then the feasible region would be those integer points. If we are talking about LP, the feasible region is here. Graphically, you can see that if we are talking about LP, then this is our optimal solution, or LP optimal solution, because the objective function is here. But this is not feasible, right? If you look at your LP feasible, uh, sorry, IP feasible points, okay, here, 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 uh, here, here. It's not very difficult to verify that among all these integer points, 5, 0, is optimal okay 5 0 is IP optimal but x1 this guy is LR optimal that means once you solve your linear relaxation you get the here and uh, no matter how you run up run down whatever you are here right oh, but you never get a chance to get to the optimal solution oh, you never get a chance to get to the optimal solution and uh, here um, they do not seem to, seem to be very far, but it's very easy to generate another example where uh, what you get here is very, very close, uh, far from the optimal LP, op, IP optimal solution. Okay, so um, we don't want this. Uh, we don't want to simply round up or round down our uh, fractional solution. We want a general way that guarantees to find an optimal solution. That's the algorithm we want to tell you in this lecture. Thank you.